The early days of the internet and the rise of YouTube led to many talented young people creating whatever kind of crazy shit they had in mind. It was a chance to share your funny little ideas and skits to the world without having it broadcasted on live TV and having much more freedom. One of the most popular routes was to express yourself through gaming skits called machinimas. One of the most popular machinimas though was a strange little web series titled Freeman's Mind. It was a sort of playthrough of Half-Life Source, but instead of listening to the commentary of the player, instead you are following the inner monologue of Gordon Freeman going through the events of the game. Are you the one making all that noise? <laughs> Monkey on a stick! We're getting fingered by Godzilla! No, no! This series was created by one Ross Scott, who had previously worked on Civil Protection, another really great and really funny series featured on Machinima that had also received a lot of praise. Freeman's Mind was well received from fans of Civil Protection and Machinima alike. Earlier episodes would easily surpass the 1 million view mark on Machinima. Now, this series is, in my opinion, one of the funniest and most tightly written series on YouTube as a whole, even today. And it seems to be for reasons that no one actually talks about. So that's really why I wanted to make this video. To showcase the true genius of Freeman's Mind. The most apparent reason why this show works so well is because of the main character, Gordon Freeman, who is voiced by Ross Scott. He is a self-centered and narcissistic asshole who wants nothing more than to rise up the corporate ladder and have everyone work under him and appreciate him. But, most importantly, he is a theoretical physicist, and Ross does not forget this. Ross constantly adds in lines of dialogue that show that Freeman's actually qualified for his job and that he most of the time knows what he's doing there. At times like this, I remember why I became a physicist. To show antimatter particles who's boss! Yeah! It never feels like Freeman is not smart enough for his position. This is a fantastic touch to the character that makes him feel all that much more believable, which in turn makes the viewers care about him even more. And that's the next biggest thing. Freeman feels like a real person going through the hells of Black Mesa. He doesn't go through the whole scenario as a video game character. He thinks through situations. And if in the game there's a ledge that's a little high up and a little out of his reach that normally in the game you would not be able to climb, he will make Freeman climb up that way instead of going the long way around and doing this whole song and dance routine that makes no sense from the mind of a normal person. This makes the comedy work even better when the only way through a part of the game isn't the sensible way or the realistic way. I guess that means I have to take the elevator. I guess that means I have to take the elevator! <laughs> oh my god! That was stupid. Why do I keep doing stupid things? Oh my god. Oh. I could have died! Now, there is a few hiccups here and there in the show where it gets a little too unrealistic and unbelievable, but it's still a video game where you fight aliens and hundreds of marine soldiers. You need to suspend your disbelief just a little bit. One of the more subtle parts of the show, and one of my personal favorites, is Gordon's slow descent into madness. The Gordon Freeman at the beginning of the series is not the same Gordon Freeman at the end of the series. At the beginning of the series, he starts as a man who is cold and rude, but is never malicious. When the soldiers first show up, he is reluctant to shoot them, always seeing if they would fire first while never firing first himself. He would justify his actions as self-defense. He would use that to cope with his killing. I'll at least give him some warning so I don't sneak up on him. This guy's jumpy. Hey, killer, what's up? God, Jesus, damn it! Diplomacy sucks! Ow! And what's your problem? And why are you shooting everyone? Oh no. So we're gonna play nice or Nope. Well, looks like my armor is better than yours. And I'll just loot your bodies, cause that's how I roll. And that puts me at six or seven counts of self-defense. Alright. Now later in the series, after killing so many of the soldiers and aliens, he slowly starts to become okay with the idea of just killing anyone he sees. Nope. Hey, I'm outside! Was 
sabotage, maybe. No. Maybe. No. I know for sure she's been killing my buddies. Oh. Oh, yeah. Ru He'll pay. He will definitely pay. There. That's for trying to guilt trip me. That's it. No more Mr. Nice Guy. I keep clicking on to the hope that one of these goons will hear me out, but it just isn't happening. This self-defense crap isn't cutting it because I never get to fire first. Damn, no, not this way. Normally, I'd need a really good reason to murder someone, but this whole day's been fucked. Better that a hundred probably guilty people die than one of them get a clean shot on me. He is very quickly descending into the role of a psychopath. The next big shift is when Gordon gets knocked unconscious by the soldiers who jump him. Instead of retaining all of his memories of what happened, he goes through the symptoms of a concussion and doesn't remember the previous events. As time goes on, he begins to gain his memory back, but in a skewed and more cynical way. He believes everyone is out to get him, and starts to kill soldiers just for fun, gaining joy out of it all. Oh, hey! I need some help! Don't be shy! Wow, that is beyond rude. Oh, shit. I forgot. Everyone's trying to kill me. Yeah, of course. It's not my imagination. Everyone is trying to kill me. Yoo-hoo! Over here! You forgot your bullets! Take some of mine! You're welcome! Hmm. I'm going to need some more ammo if I'm going to kill the whole world. We then see Gordon openly kill a suspicious but ultimately friendly security guard, showing that he truly has lost any semblance of his earlier humanity. Kill me! Hey, Aha! <laughs> Fool me once, shame on you! Fool me twice, everyone dies! Yeah, I see right through you, standing there acting like you're my best friend, when you obviously wave that assassin right on past you. I can't trust anyone here. He went from the start of the game not wanting to murder anyone to late series gleefully singing Modern Major General while mowing down dozens of armed soldiers. Hell, I could be a general. I have enough combat experience by now. I'm gonna sing about it. They can't stop me. <clears throat> I am the very model of a Modern Major General. Life information festival, animal and mineral. I know the kings of England and I quote the fights historical from Marathon to Waterloo in order categorical. This isn't out of character. It's just showing that he has developed and changed as a person because of the events in the series. This leads to great sources of comedy and some hilarious reactions later on down the road. One of my favorite parts of the show, though, that perfectly portrays why this character works is this scene. Believe me. Well, it's hard to think of excuses when people are shooting at you inside a ventilation shaft. I had the same problem in high school. Just happened. The scene begins with Gordon killing the soldiers while making his usual witty quips here and there to show that he's not really taking the encounter too seriously. But then the grenade is thrown in. This puts him into a do or die scenario where if he doesn't act fast, he's going to die. This causes Gordon to promptly shut up and not say a single word until he's sure that all the soldiers in the area are dead. Gordon uses his sarcasm and humor as a sort of coping mechanism. But in a situation like that where it is do or die, he realistically shuts up and gets serious for a moment. That's the kind of small but insane attention to detail that I adore from this series. This leads me to my next point. Ross adds all these small little details to make the show feel that much more alive. Things like Gordon holstering his weapon and him holding his breath underwater are small things that make it feel all that much more real and less immersion breaking. But the details that truly make the show special are the episodes and scenarios Ross adds just to spice up the series. Things like Gordon suddenly getting the hiccups in a battle, an April Fool's episode where Gordon actually dies, a hilarious episode going through the game's tutorial, Gordon getting high on morphine, and four whole episodes where he goes through the whole entire Half-Life demo. These are all things that were added that bring tons of variety to the episodes and keeps you on your toes throughout the whole series. It makes the episodes feel less samey and makes you really excited to see the next episode because you don't know what Ross is going to add to make it that much more special of an episode. But I think what truly shows how remarkable this series was is through the little mind series copycats that sprouted from the series. You have series like 
Barney's Mind, Shell's Mind, Shepard's Mind, any game that had a silent protagonist you bet would have a mind series on it. Some of these were really not so great and pretty lazy, but a lot of these actually could be really good and really funny mind series. The ones I previously mentioned had a lot of heart and work put into them. I think my favorite though has to be Shepard's Mind because it comes the closest to the quality of Freeman's mind by adding in all these small little details and funny moments that really don't happen in the normal game, but are added to the series anyways. This sure is a big white flat surface. Oh, I just got an awesome idea. And just about. There we go. <laughs> there it is. Funnily enough, Robin Darnell, the creator of Shepard's Mind, got his own cameo in Freeman's Mind. Oh, it is my lucky day. I'm gonna kick this guy's ass so hard. Hey, get back here, you big orange fuck! About that, uh, there's a point, like, what, right before Freeman goes into Zen, he jumps through the portal and. In Opposing Force, Adrian Shepard comes through a door just in time to see Freeman jump through the portal. And in my series, I had I had Shepard shout, Get back here, you big orange fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and I was thinking... Uh, Maybe how to connect. Well, you, no, you I'll, could, see, I'll, I'll have to watch that episode and watch... The, and watch. Like I could just really, a lot of this, I, I haven't played Half-Life for the later sections in years, Opposing Force even longer. So yeah, I'll have to I, see how it syncs up, but yeah, I uh, I could just send you the, like the voice clip, and you, you could have it like just just faintly in the background. I'll see. Like... I'm gonna go. Don't fuck me on this. No. Christ. This is so fucked. What? After many, many, many long years of this, Ross went on to finish all of Half-Life before taking a break to work on his own big machinima movie. But, I don't know how to say this, but I have to make the movie. I have to make the movie. While he's working on the movie, he's also been working on many smaller projects like his series Ross's Game Dungeon, which is incredible by the way, and you should 100% check out if you're into video games. But if you flash forward to 2017, Ross has started making his own official Season 2 of Freeman's Mind in Half-Life 2. And I am very happy to say that it is the exact same quality as the original show, and has potential to be even better. Gee, where can I be going next? Here. Oh no. Ah! no. no. That was a close one. Fuck. Ross! Get going! I just did you a favor! Okay, fine, I'm going. If you didn't want people dropping in from the sky, you should have locked your ceiling. What's going on? That thing was about to kill us. Is everyone here stupid? I am very excited to see what Ross has in store for the rest of season two, and I'm very, very, very interested to see what his genius mind will think of in his movie. <laughs>